We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Alright, so here, I want to show you and people this. Ah. Oh my god. This is the Cerebus Saga. This is um, uh, one of my favorite works of uh, graphic fiction literature, comics. It's one of my favorite comics of all time. This entire thing is a single story, just one ongoing really? story. Really? Created by a guy. That's his name? A guy? No, created by, really created by two, guy, two guys. Um, Dave Sim is the main uh, writer and artist and so on who, who did 300 issues, independently published wow. the whole time, all on his own. Um, and then for a good chunk of this, he had, a, um, for most of this, he had a Gerhardt which was like a, he, his background artist, the guy who strictly did background art. So the uh, so he had a writer and w like one writer, one artist for this whole thing, basically. Yeah, wow. like one one creator basically That's awesome. was is like the, the the main thing. So Dave Sim started this in the 1970s. He went from the 1970s into the 2000s. He published nonstop every single month, 300 issues. Wow, this Jesus. guy put out a comic on his own. So Cerebus, this 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 is the Cerebus saga, and it is about the Ardvark of the same name, Cerebus. Uh, Cerebus was a misspelling of Cerberus, the, the three-headed dog of, of Did he do mythology. It was an accidental misspelling. Really? Yes. That's pretty funny. And he, and he kept it. And you can see that is Cerebus on the cover there. He is, a, he is an aardvark warrior. And when the, the comic started, and it was very crude when it, when, when it first started, like the, art, the artwork and, and all that, very primitive. When it started off, it was meant to be a, like a parody of the uh, the Conan the Barbarian comics that were coming out at the time, uh, written by Roy Thomas and drawn by uh, Barry Windsor Smith, okay. um, that were that were big at the time and popular at the time. So there, it's the the initial comics are just sort of a parody of that, um, but with a talking animal and he's a badass warrior and he goes around, you know. Defeating enemies and so and, he originally and, and hooking up with like babes and stuff like that. He did that for a while, and then eventually he moved on, and he this this is widely considered like one of the great graphic novels of all time, High Society, this story arc. He decided, you know what, I'm going to use this character and do political satire. <sighs> so this whole this whole like 500 something pages, this whole 500 page work, is this huge work of political satire, talking about uh, riffing on elections and just all sorts of crap like that. But it's hilarious. It's it's it's, it's funny. There's drama and there's humor. The artwork is, gets increasingly great. After he got done, and a lot of people consider High Society the high point of the whole series. I, I don't agree. I think this is the high point of the series. This two, two, two volume, thousand page, Church and State parts one and two. I think this is, to me, like one of the great Great works of, of, of comic literature of all time. Sort of a send up and a satire of, of um, organized religion and the Catholic Church and re religion in general and cults and belief and all this sort of stuff in like this thousand pages where, okay, so in high society, Cerebus, the talking aardvark, becomes prime minister. Okay. Okay. So where <laughs> can the he, end of it all? Where can he go after being prime minister? But Pope. He becomes the Pope. That makes sense, though. In a fictional world, this is all set in a, in a, in a fictional world. Okay. So, so in church and state, right? You have a a fake like Mick Jagger and Keith Richards who show up. <laughs> um, okay. You have parodies on comic book characters. Plus, you have like really intense drama with some of these these characters. His artwork is be beautiful. His page layouts are beautiful. Here we go. Yeah, Gerhard comes on board with Church and State Volume 2. He's the background artist. Yeah, I mean, his art is absolutely terrific. At the, at the end of this story, basically, like, there's wholesale destruction of religious orders and societies and so on and so forth, and this new religion takes over of, like, essentially their... I guess you would call them, like, um, evil nuns. <laughs> <laughs> And then it goes into Jaka's story, which is this beautiful meditative piece split up by prose pieces, if I could find them in here, prose. And, and, and you could see like stuff like this, look in the, in, in, in the side, all that text. And Jeez. So wait, wow, that's a lot different than in the one before, which was mostly art and hardly any words. And this one's got like- Yeah, and you got these dense, and this, and this, this deals with, um, abused abused women and 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 being you know like a surviving trauma and things like that and so on and so forth but again still all part of one ongoing story 
Then it goes into Melmoth, essentially a sort of biography of a fictional Oscar Wilde. For some reason, he decides <laughs> to do that. And then after that, that's, this is when Dave Sim sort of starts to go a little off the, the, the deep end. Sorry, Dave. But like he was, he was widely considered, you know, like sort of this, this great progressive creator at the time. He had, he had some of the, the strongest and most nuanced and most interesting female characters of the era. And and like he laid, lays out this whole mythology about men and women and genders and, and how it fits into like the cosmic, you know, it gets into this heady Little crap. Heady, yeah. And then all of a sudden it goes into this. This is the, the four part mothers and daughters arc uh, made up of uh, um, uh, flight, women, reeds, and minds. And in this, Cerebus continues his sort of adventures where he goes up against the evil nun religion type things. But in this, Dave Sim starts to outline his whole cosmic theory that women are the void who suck the life force and energy from <laughs> so, all things. Is it fair to say that between the last one and these, he was... A bad relationship might have happened. Potentially, yes. <laughs> yeah. you know, he went through. He, he went through a divorce. That's a surprise. This one, Reeds, became really controversial because if, if you see Reeds, much of it doesn't look like comic at all. Wow. It's just a lot of looks lot like of, the Bible. Th throughout it, throughout it. Oh, gee, you think that looks like the Bible? It's funny you say that <laughs> because you don't even know what's coming. <laughs> so, so throughout it, you have these these long text pieces and stuff like that, and uh, the reads reads refers to these um, like pamphlets that in the fictional world are getting passed out, and in the pamphlets, it's talking about this whole sort of belief system that he lays out and how terrible women are and, and blah blah blah. But somewhere along the line, in the in the midst of this one, I believe it's a. Uh, Issue 163, I think, is the infamous one. I think that's it. 163, not 183. I think it's 163. It's it's sort of what became this this infamous issue. In 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 the, the this fictional read, he sort of switches to the first person, and you can tell he's he starts oh, he's really writing his own kind of feelings about how like awful women are and blah 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 blah. Ugh. Then in guys, um, guys, and also Rick's story, Cerebus gets um, banished to a pub. And literally, they spend like two or four hundred pages drinking and getting drunk and just doing guy stuff. <laughs> so this so is on. following a theme of probably what was going on. Yes, but I mean, look how like beautiful, like yeah, his, pa cool. his page layouts are gorgeous. He's uh, he's he he does some of the most clever stuff with look again lots and lots of text. He does some really clever stuff. Um, how gorgeous some of this stuff is. Um, he does some really clever stuff with the page that comes up in these. Like later volumes, after after he finally gets done with guys, you go into this two part form and void and going home, where where Cerebus gets back with an old woman friend of his, but um, it goes really bad because she's not what he thought he was, what what she what he thought she was, and so on and so forth. This one also doubles as sort of um, a a look at uh, Ernest Hemingway's life and, oh, okay. and his final days and mostly lays the blame for Hemingway's suicide on Hemingway's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Sensing a theme. Yes. If you're interested in, in the art of how comics get done, like look at some of these these layouts, right? With these dense, 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 Jeez. dense panels that come together as, as, as you're reading it. Like there, there's a rhyme and a reason to why he's doing the this, this sort of stuff that he's, that he's doing there. In one of these later ones, I, and there's this one here, Latter Days, you mentioned the Bible before. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Well, so this Jeez. this is filled with um, I don't even know how to describe this. The Torah, as as interpreted through Woody Allen films, <laughs> right? So huge, dense, dense text. Oh my God! That's wait, yeah. So what? This this one's kind of a nightmare to read, actually. So that's not really. Is it still following? Still following the same story, yeah. The Three Stooges play a major part in this, of course. As it should. You can see this, a big weirdo religious text. Um, there, but there's this one really great sequence in here. One of the one of the, the, the pages, actually it's several pages, but one of the sequences that this guy had such a great grasp on the comic form and what you could do with it. Right, so this is the sequence where Cerebus is in a dark, like, room dungeon sort of thing. And he's trying to get Jeez. he's trying to get up this flight of stairs. And it's this long flight of stairs with no railing on the one side and this long drop. And he actually uses the the the, the captions, the caption boxes, to show movement 
and emotion and where so like so here it's Cerebus realizing that 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 he's that he's on the edge of this fall that he could fall and see so he's squishing himself up against the wall that's freaking brilliant it's it, and throughout <laughs> this whole thing he does stuff like wow. this where he's actually using the medium he's that's, doing something unique that you could only yeah, do in yeah, comics yeah, yeah. you know and it's 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 like that's pretty cool it's 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 super, brilliant yeah it's like he, he he does stuff like this all the time huh. throughout it and then in the final one what was that what was going on in Oh, it's just just it's it, weirdo relit like okay, okay. when it the, just goes into chaos. Like yeah, that. like the later volumes of Cerebus, you really need to be a dedicated fan to okay. be reading them. The early yeah, ones, I I recommend to anyone, but then like as, you you can't just pick that one up and get into it. Oh no no okay. no 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 no! no. <laughs> you have to be you have to be dipped in it. The last day opens up with like Dave Sim thought that he had come up with. A, this is the final one? A, yes. Okay. He thought he had come up with the scientific theory that explains everything and links the biblical creation with with like like string theory and Einstein's right, theory yeah, everything, of like but, everything. But <laughs> and, scientists have been trying to figure out for... And it opens up with just 40 pages of him ap actually like... Laying out his theory? Uh, uh, yeah, his whole like cosmic creation. Wow. Yeah, it's Did super you, bizarre. Does it, does it it's, make any... It's just... Just no. I, I, <laughs> the good thing is, though, you could you could skip those initial pages and then get to the actual story part, which is a great ending to this entire saga. One of the things that. Cerebus had always said throughout his saga was that he's or he was told early on um, in the church and state arc um, he was told uh, it was prophesied he was going to die alone and unloved uh, alone unloved and unmourned oh wait in the in the comic it says that yes okay and so so you're, you're sort of waiting to see okay so how is Cerebus going to get to this point where he dies alone right you know unloved and unmourned and he does in fact die alone unloved and unmourned um he dies as a miserable miserable old man you can see he's he's very old in in here as compared to in the younger ones um and and he dies and the end of the the end of this as we knew it would be is Cerebus dying which what, makes sense which yes. is what it was always going to be well, but like what it take him i think like 30 years or something like that wow. to, to, to finish this whole That's thing impressive it's it's actually pretty I, I if I wrote all that I'd be like I'm and and done. Yeah, it's incredibly impressive. Um, like this body of work, a lot of uh, ardent comic fans now like don't want anything to do with the guy because, like I said, he kind of went off the deep end and revealed himself to be kind of a woman hating xenophobe living in isolation somewhere in Canada, <laughs> hating people and, and 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 so on. But he's like he's really open to like talking with people and having like you, you will get in. I know multiple people who have gotten in like long, like year year long fax conversations wow. with him from like where he will write these ten page letters back. Yeah, he's he's yeah he's, he's an interesting <laughs> character. So they so they're they're the kind of thing where it would be worth somebody who's never heard of him like me to just start getting and just reading them. See the first to a point. The first one is kind of skippable, but I think it sets up a lot of the stuff that comes later. The ones that that everyone agrees like if you're into comics in the art form is uh that like are worth checking out is high society which is again it's like sort of his political satire it's 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 very funny but also you know serious and deals with serious things but in a hilarious funny way and the church and state arc which to me is is some of the greatest comic work ever made those three are kind of like essential and you could read those on their own like you could yeah kinda... you yeah for the most part yeah okay. you could you could read them on their own you it might end at a place where you kind of feel like okay well i want to know where it goes from right. here but um you know and and i see some and i often will throw jocka's story in as well because i think jocka's story is maybe the best work that he's done just beautiful stuff and then after that like you just need to be into it because it gets progressively weirder yeah. yeah you have to be part of it to understand it yeah like he goes into all his like his his odd theories and stuff those stuff like this like i mean i feel like you could just pick up guys and read it as like a humor book about like a bunch of drunken oafs in a bar being yeah. drunken oafs and it's very and it's funny and it's good stuff if you're into it then it's super fascinating and super interesting i don't, I don't think there's 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 very few people who have ever used the medium the way he has right really exploited like the, the, the unique things that comics can do that books can't and movies can't and so on but it's also difficult to read if you're not like into it 
But the other ones, these, I do, I highly recommend. Anyone who, who like wants to read really great shit that they've never seen before, High Society and Church and State, good comic shops will usually carry these, at the very least, these volumes. And these are like totally worth checking out. Start with High Society. Look for High Society, should be relatively easy to find. And if you dig that, then move on to Church and State. And that's it. I want to be done for the day now. <laughs> We interrupt our program to bring you this important message.